मॉर्निंग फ्रेंड्स इट गिव्स मी एब्सोल्यूट फीलिंग ऑफ टेकिंग दिस कोर्स इंजीनियरिंग थर्मोडाइनमिक्स एज ऑफ नाउ आई हैव कंप्लीटेड माय फोर एंड हाफ मॉड्यूल्स आई एम इन द लास्ट मॉड्यूल दैट इज मॉड्यूल फिफ्थ of btech engineering courses for aeronautical and the mechanical engineering i am in the last unit that is the last module which is heat transfer and compressors in heat transfer i have covered the modes different modes of heat transfer conduction convection and the radiation we have also seen that the heat transfer for the conduction convection and the radiation we have seen the fourier's law for the conduction we have also seen the newton's law of cooling we have learned we have derived the equations also the kirchhoff's law for radiation in the previous lectures we have discussed about resistance method for conduction and the convection and if there are composite wall in which different materials are there and also some fluid is all involved a big amount of fluid is involved hot or the cold how we can calculate its resistance and by the help of resistance how we can calculate the heat transfer this all things we have done it in the last class we have also solved few numericals of conduction convection and the heat transfer and i have seen some practical issues like if human is sitting on this ac room like i am sitting from my body my body will radiate the heat the wall temperatures are different so from my body how much radiation will be there and from my body how much convection will be there we are not considering any transfer of heat from directly from my leg to the earth and we have seen that the total amount of heat transfer is the summation of the convective heat transfer plus radiative heat transfer like this problems a practical problems two in number we have already solved in my the previous class please refer if you want to see the my way of solving the problem and it is very very interesting because this problems are real problems and practically you can demonstrate in your class also so in my today's lecture i am going to take about heat exchanger because these heat exchangers are used in the industry this may be the petrochemical refineries metal forming refrigeration and air conditioning cryogenics and so many other industries like your uh, polymer industries all the industries there will not be any industry where heat exchangers are not there automobiles your aircrafts your ships everywhere heat exchangers are used sometimes these heat exchangers we say as a radiator if you see your bus truck your diesel cars you will have the radiators these radiators these radiators are fitted on in the front of the vehicle so as and when your vehicles are moving a air flow will be hitting the radiator and the heat will be eliminated if you want to maintain a certain temperature like ac room i am here this ac room is working by the air conditioner this air conditioner also is having a condenser in that condenser your heat this thing is heat is maintained heat is transferred so heat exchangers are very very important and in my today's class i am going to discuss about heat exchangers we as a mechanical or the aeronautical engineer it is very much essential to understand how many types are there what are its uses so i am going to discuss in today's class the topic of this class is heat exchangers and its types <coughs> so in 
In today's class, I will discuss about introduction to heat exchangers, types of heat exchangers, illustration of double pipe heat exchanger, cell and the tube type heat exchanger, multi-pass heat exchangers, plate heat exchangers, regenerative heat exchanger. This all I am going to discuss in my today's class and I will go one by one and we will see that how we can do in a better way. So revision of the last class, simultaneously heat transfer, we have seen that how if this is the room and here is a, some person is here. So this will emit some heat. So it is called the Q dot radiation and there is air in this room. This will also do the convection. So the total heat by this type of it is called the simultaneous heat transfer. In this total heat transfer will be Q dot by convection plus Q dot by radiation. So you have to use the formula H A T S minus T infinity plus epsilon sigma T S to the power 4 minus T infinity to the power. So this is the summation of the simultaneous heat transfer mechanism. We have solved this equation, uh, uh, two problems like this in my the previous class. If you want to go through the numericals and this topic, you can go just previous lecture on this. This is available and the numerical problem on the two, it, it is a heat transfer from human body to the atmosphere. This is also completed in my last problem. Two problems we have done. Now uh, I will go for the introduction to heat exchanger and in this we will see that what is the heat exchanger. <clears throat> heat exchangers are devices that facilitate the exchange of heat between two fluids that are at different temperatures while keeping them from mixing with each other. So heat exchanger which facilitate the exchange of heat from lower to high or high to lower between two fluids that are at the different temperatures at maybe T1 another maybe the T2 while keeping them from mixing each other. Mixing with each other. So we, we should not try to mix these two fluids with each other. Application from heating and air conditioning system in a household to chemical processing, power production in large plants, petrochemicals, ships, aircrafts, metal forming and many more. These are the applications for the heat exchanger. Heat ex exchangers differ from the mixing chamber in that they do not allow to the two fluids to involve to mix. In heat exchanger, we will not allow the fluids to mix to the each other. They are separated by some tubes or some other plates and all. But in the mixing chamber, both will be mixed together. In this heat transfer in a heat exchanger usually involves convection in each fluid and conduction through the wall separating the two fluids. So in this normally we don't take the radiation is one of the parameter but 100% the convection and the conduction will take place because there will be metallic tubes, metallic pipes, metallic plates from where the two different fluids with a different temperature will move. So the fluid which is inside may be hot or the cold it will move through the pipe. Pipes are made by the metal or material uh, that metal will transfer as a conduction but the fluid will transfer its energy by the way of convection. In the analysis of 
heat exchanger. It is convenient to work with an overall heat transfer coefficient u. That accounts for the contribution of all these effects on heat transfer. So we should initially we have taken the heat transfer coefficient for conduction is k, for the convection is h. But we will take here one important, the combination of both is heat transfer coefficient as a u. That accounts for the contribution of all this conduction and the convection effect. The rate of heat transfer between the two fluids at a location in a heat exchanger depend on the magnitude of the temperature difference at that location which varies along the heat exchanger. So, the rate of heat transfer between the two fluids at a location in a heat exchanger depend on the magnitude of the temperature difference at that location which varies along the heat exchanger. Now I will discuss, so as of now what is the heat exchanger and how we have to do and what are the applications we have done just now. Now I will discuss about the types of heat exchanges which normally we use in our day to day life in industries, in the power plants, in other areas. So different applications required different types of hardware and the different configuration of heat transfer equipments are needed. So we, accordingly we have to see that the attempt to match the heat transfer hardware to the heat transfer requirement within the specified constraints has resulted in numerous types of innovation heat exchanger design. So as per the requirement, as per the available of the spaces, as per the available of our bulk, uh, this uh, fluid, like for ship, we have the sufficient water is there. For aircraft, we have sufficient air is there. So we will use air as a cooling element. In the ship, we will use as the water, the sea water as a cooling element. So as per our requirement, as per our the condition, the attempts to match the heat transfer hardware to the heat transfer requirement within the specified constraints. We should have, we have, we cannot take water in, in the aircraft. So we cannot use the water for the cooling of the heat exchanger. But for the ship, we have sufficient amount of water. But if you see the submarine, we cannot use air because air is not available there inside the water. So there we will use the water only, no air is used. So as per our requirement, we will use the different methods, different ideas we will develop and we, in this way different types of innovative heat exchangers were designed. So now I will talk about the types of heat exchangers which are commonly used in the industry or in any different domain of the engineering. First one is the double pipe heat exchanger. So in this we have the double pipe and this is the simplest type of heat exchanger consists of two concentric pipes of different diameter as shown in figure called the double pipe heat exchanger. <coughs> the second one is a parallel flow heat exchanger. In this both the hot and the cold fluids enter the heat exchanger at the same end and move in the same direction. So it is called the parallel. Third one is the counter flow heat exchanger in that the hot and the cold fluid enters the heat exchanger at opposite end and flow in opposite direction. So this you can see the diagram here. I have shown here the first. First one is the parallel flow. So in this you can see that the both are entering from here. It is hot and this is the cold. So here is more hot and it is a more cold as the cold fluid is moving inside the pipeline. Okay, this you can see the hot it is moving. Above that it is cold is going. So here both are extreme hot, extreme cold as they are moving, moving together 
as at the in exit the cold will have the here the, the hotter and it is cooler than the initial so here this hot fluid is made the cold but if you see the another type it is called the parallel flow if you see the another type the the hot is moving from this side it is hot here hottest and here is less hot here is coldest it is hotter so here if you see the the hot fluid is moving from this side it is entering in this pipe and it is going from here from outer casing some cold fluid is entering so the hottest or the coldest place will be at the lowest temperature so it is a counter flow and here this will be hottest and both will be hotter here input and this thing and here both will be the cooler it is opposite and it is more effective than the parallel flow configuration so double pipe heat exchanger we can see the parallel flow and the counter flow inside this you can see the pipes are entering and outer of that another pipe which is flowing with a cold fluid and inside it is a hot fluid so the the hot fluid is transferring the heat to the cold fluid so we required as per the required temperature we can obtain by this method so different flow regimes and associated temperature profiles in a double pipe heat exchanger i have taken from the reference 2 now i will talk about the compact heat exchanger this compact heat exchangers another type of heat exchanger which is specifically designed to realize a large heat transfer surface area per unit volume in the compact heat exchanger so compact means what in a small area a much work you can perform so another type of heat exchanger which is specifically designed to realize a large heat transfer surface per unit area volume in the compact heat exchanger so more heat exchange with the less volume or area the ratio of the heat transfer surface area of a heat exchanger to its volume is called the area density beta so the ratio of the heat transfer surface area of a heat exchanger to its volume so area divided by volume is called the beta and this beta is called the area density area density a heat exchanger with beta 700 meter square per meter cube or 200 feet square plus feet square feet cube is classified as being the compact so if the beta is 700 then we can say that it is a compact one examples of the compact heat exchangers are car radiators you might have seen the car radiator in front of the engine is small radiators are there so their beta is 1000 so if beta is greater than 700 then it is called the compact so the car radiator it is beta is equal to 1000 meter square per meter cube b is a glass ceramic gas turbine heat exchanger so in the turbine we do the heat exchanger because this should not heat up the turbine so here beta is equal to 6000 very high so it is very much compact for gas ceramic gas turbine heat exchanger c is the the regenerator of stirling engine it is 15000 more than the gas turbine we use the stirling engine the human body is also beta is equal to 20000 in 
meter square per meter cube. So this air density, area density of he, human is very compact. Human is also very compact. Compact heat exchanger enable us to achieve high heat transfer rates between two fluids in a small volume. So compact, if it is a compact, this number shows that a very high heat transfer rates between two fluids in a small volume we can transfer. That is the meaning of this number. They are commonly used in application with strict limitation on the weight and the volume of heat exchanger. So weight and the volume of the heat exchanger we have to always find out and there only we have to use it. So this you can see in the car it is like this compact heat exchanger for air conditioners. So it, it is like this if you see in cinema hall and all you will use like this heat exchanger your air AC of your car and your vehicles it is used like this. The large surface area in compact heat exchangers is obtained by attaching closely spaced thin plate or corrugated fins to the wall separating the two fluids. So here we have to use the corrugated walls, corrugated surfaces to do the heat exchange more. Compact heat exchangers are commonly used in gas to gas and gas to liquid or liquid to gas heat exchanger to counteract the low heat transfer coefficient associated with gas flow with increased surface area. So normally we use for the automobile and all, we use the compact. Here the liquid to gas, gas to liquid transfer is taking place, not liquid to liquid. So, so we use, you know, that coolant, special coolant, it is a liquid and that gives a more heat transfer coefficient. In a car radiator, which is a water to air compact heat exchanger, for example, it is no surprise that fins are attached to the air side of the tube surface. So if you see the car radiator, here water to air compact heat exchangers are used and in water we mix a coolant. So water will be carrying more heat and we also add some fins so that a more heat exchanger, more heat exchange or rate of heat exchange is present. In compact heat exchanger, the two fluids usually move perpendicular to each other and such flow configuration is called the cross flow. So it is going like this and the flow is, will go to perpendicular. So it is called the cross flow. The cross flow is further classified as unmixed and mixed flow depending on the flow configuration as shown in figure below. In A, the cross flow is said to be unmixed since the plate fins force the fluid to flow through a perpendicular interfins pacing and prevent it from moving in the transverse direction that is parallel to the tubes. So this you can see here, here we have both fluid mixed here, it is a cross flow. This you can see from fluid is moving in this direction but cross flow is perpendicular to this direction. So it is called the both fluids unmixed. But in this if you see one fluid mixed, one fluid unmixed. So here class flow it is going, so another is mixing and another is not mixing. So the cross flow in a B is said to be mixed since the fluid now is free to move in the transverse direction. Both fluids are unmixed in a car radiator. The presence of mixing in the fluid can have a significant effect on the heat transfer characteristics of the heat exchanger. So if you are mixing, it has some different significant effect on the heat exchanger. And this I have taken from the different flow configuration in cross flow heat exchanger. Reference is from 
Senegal, chapter 16, page number 715. Now I will discuss the another type, it is called cell and tube type heat exchanger. So here cell and tube heat exchangers contain a large number of tubes packed in a cell with their axis parallel to th that of the cell. So in this cell and tube heat exchanger contain a large number of tubes. So many tubes are there. Just I will show in the last slide. This all the real images of this packed in a cell with their axis parallel to th that of the cell. Heat exchangers take place. Heat transfer take place as one fluid flows inside the tubes while the other fluid flows outside of the tube through the cell. Baffles are commonly placed in the cell to enhance heat transfer and to maintain uniform spacing between the tubes. This you can see here that this is the cell here, this black color and inside this you can see this is the cell here and these are the tubes number of tubes are here. These are the tubes. Here we are putting some baffles here. These are the baffles. One, two here. One, two, three, four baffles we are putting. So this, the flow which is going, it is mixing very smoothly and it is taking a lot of time so that a more heat extraction is possible by this type of arrangement. So in this, if you see tube inlet from here, it is going and from here it is going to the tube and from here if you see cell inlet a cold fluid will come from here and it will go and mix with each other like this like this like this like this like this and then it will go out from here same way the hot fluid will enter from here it will go from each tube like this it will go out from here and then it will output is uh, outlet is from this side it will go from here so a very nice mixing of hot and the cold fluids are there and it is very efficient mostly this type of things are used in industries for air conditioning of a big cinema hall and all this we use like this type of cell and tube type of heat exchangers are normally used Cell and tube heat exchangers are not suitable for use in automobile and aircraft application because of their relatively large in size. So we cannot use for a automobile or in this because the size is very big, weight is very high. We cannot use in automobile and the aircraft because but it is very good for industrial use. Especially I have seen this thing used for uh, air conditioning of cinema hall or mall and all. There you can see like this systems are used. Now I will discuss another type of heat exchanger that is called multi-pass heat exchanger. In this we will see that one cell pass and two tube pass. So here we have one cell pass and two tubes. So one cell and the two tubes are there. Heat exchangers in which all the tubes make one U-turn that is called one cell, one you turn in the cell, for example, are called the one cell pass and two tube pass heat exchanger. Likewise, a heat exchanger that involves two passes in the cell and four passes in the tube is called a two passes and the four tube passes heat exchanger. This we can see in this. This is the one cell, one pass. If you see here, it is cold water is entering from here, the heart is entering from this, and it is taking one U-turn, and again it is coming up in. F from here it is entering, and here it is out. But from here, if you see the cool tube is entering here and going from here. Here is a one U-turn. So if you see here, another is two cell passes and four tubes. Passes. So here, if you see, this is the in one U turn and one tube. Two U turns are here. So in this, you have two cell passes and four tube U. Okay. So here, 
four are there. So it is called the two cell passes and four tube passes. Okay, so like this, we have the multi pass heat exchanger. Here, different tubes are moving, and as per that, we can define this as if one cell pass and two tube pass, or two cell passes and four tube passes. So, here in this way, we can define it. Now, I will go for the next type of heat exchanger, it is called plate heat exchanger. So, plate heat exchanger which, which consists of a series of plates with corrugated flat flow passes shown in the figure. This you can uh, see here, plate heat exchanger. Here we have the different plates are here. You see, number of plates are there. Plate heat exchangers which, which consist of a series of plates with corrugated flat flow passes shown in the figure. The, the hot and the cold fluids flow in an alternate passages and thus each cold fluid stream is surrounded by two hot fluid stream resulting in very effective heat transfer. So you can see each cold fluid is surrounded by two hot fluids. So each cold and the side by side is a hot fluid. So in this a very effective heat transfer is taking place. Plate heat, heat exchangers can grow with increasing demand for heat transfer by simply mounting more plates. So if you need more effectiveness or the more bigger size, you just add it one by one by one by one and you will get like that. Here this you can see A, B, C, D. Accordingly, you can increase the uh, size and you will get the effectiveness of this. They are well suited for liquid to liquid heat exchanger application provided that the hot and the cold fluid streams are at about the same pressure. So in this pressure of hot and the cold are very much required to be the same. In this condition, we can use this plate heat exchanger for different purposes. Now I will talk about the regenerative heat exchanger. They are another type of heat exchanger. Another type of heat exchanger that involves the alternate passes of the hot and the cold fluid stream through the same flow area is the regenerative heat exchanger. So in this, the alternate passes of hot and cold means they will not go in the same passes, but they have some alternate passes. Flow from the same area is the regenerative heat exchanger they will move from the same area will be the same. The static type of regenerative heat exchanger is basically a porous mass that has a large heat storage capacity. So we have to use some special type of mass which should be the porous and which, which are having the large storage of the heat capacity such as ceramic wire, meshes and so on. Hot and the cold fluids flow through th this porous mass alternate. So first the hot will go, so it will absorb the heat, then cold will go, it will take out the heat. So, so like this, we are using this method. Heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the matrix of the generator, regenerator. During the flow of the hot fluid and from the matrix to the cold fluid, during the flow of the cold fluid. So here if you see there is a channel we are keeping here some material this is the porous and first the hot fluid will go it will absorb here it will absorb the heat after that we will send the cold fluid. So as and when it is cold fluid is moving it will absorb the heat here and it will be rejected. So like this, it is called a regenerative heat exchanger. Heat is transferred from the hot fluid to the matrix of the regenerator during the flow of the hot fluid and from the matrix to the cold fluid during the flow of the cold fluid. So as and when the 
cold fluid is moving it will absorb the heat which is the material which is already absorbed so that is the regenerative means it is regenerating the things and it is providing thus the matrix serves as a temporary heat storage media so this matrix which is here this is the material which is the it is storage it is acting as a storage and this storage is a porous so air will enter from here and it will do the nice work now here i am next i am going to discuss about different i will show some images of different heat exchangers which are used for the different industry and which i have also shown just now so here we can see that these are the <coughs> so here figure one is a tubular heat exchanger so in this there are two tubes from here the hot fluid is entering it is the heart is leaving inside we will put the cold fluid and both are it may be contra flow or the parallel flow as per that so here this is a less hot than the initial so if it is the initial and it is for final so t final is less than t initial now we have the cell and tube we have discussed already this one so here we will have the here it is entering from this side it will go from here and it will go in each tube and it will pass from here to here here but the fluid is moving from this direction and it will move in the different way like this like this and it will cool and it will go out so it is called the cell and the tube heat exchanger which we have already discussed we have also discussed about the plate and the frame heat exchanger so we have here uh, moving from this direction it is the cold and it is the hot and this plates are given and it is moving and then the heat exchanger is taking place surface cooled condenser so here the it is an, another type of this uh, heat exchanger and this is normally used in a bigger uh, malls uh, cinema halls and all for uh, air conditioning purpose okay like this or for the cooling the steam of the system and here this you can see a real view this pipes and plates these are the plates and these are the pipes it is entering and in this way it is heat exchangers are made okay so in the next class i am going to discuss about the overall heat transfer coefficient of heat exchanger this i am going to discuss in my the next class this is the reference which i have taken from pk nag engineering thermodynamics micra hills fourth edition then yunus senegal michael a bors thermodynamics and engineering approach tata micra hills any questions you are welcome to ask my email id is yd dwedi at the rate gmail.com please do like and subscribe my channel hope this will be very much useful for you for the next class please be tuned till then thank you very much and goodbye like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates